deep in the mountains. Secret Ninja Academies train our future protectors. Hates and schools turn the series of the chosen of the others. Yo guys, what's up? It's Nick, aka Nick, aka Koki, oh aka Mullet Boy 99 Today, welcome to another Pants DIY video. Quick disclaimer, if you're new here especially, I am not a DIY YouTuber, don't call me a DIY YouTuber, don't listen to me like I know what I'm doing. More so like, take the good things I do from this video and learn from the bad things that I do from this video, my mistakes and all, if we encounter anything. These are always my first attempts. I make it a big point. Like if you guys mess up, it's okay. Keep going. Don't let it, don't don't care about it. It's okay to make mistakes and you can like, art is never done until it's done. Before you start skipping through the video and just getting straight to like the meat, the juice, I'll t this whole video is meaty and juicy. I recommend you not, especially if you're going to have a lot of questions and you're going to ask because um, I'm going to bring up a lot of advice and things as we go through the video. So yeah, we're going to go straight into it. Material. Materials that you'll need. Num In number one. Transfer paper. We'll be using transfer paper. Now I know there's a lot of better ways to do this such as vinyl But to get vinyl cuts like you're either going to need a vinyl cutter Which can be like there's actually pretty affordable ones and I think it's worth it I might invest in one sometime in the future for this channel even I'll put a photo of one right here This one's like super popular. It's called the circuit Critter or circuit pro to I don't know man Hey, well, I'll do a video about that in the future for sure. Okay, but most of you guys do have a printer at home and the only printer that you need for this is an inkjet printer. At least that's what they recommend. In number two, we have a printer. Yay. Um, specifically an inkjet printer. That's what they recommend. That's what other YouTubers have recommended. They even said like another YouTuber said, you know, don't come crying to me when it's not working with your laser printer. But I have seen some comments online on Reddit saying that a laser printer does work. I don't even know, bro. But with that said, even I did want an inkjet. I just wanted a color printer for myself anyway. So I went ahead and bought one. So let's do a little printer unboxing. For some reason, if you want to know the exact printer I got, it's this one right here, the HP NV5055. 12 year old boy learns how to set up a printer. I've had someone in the comments say like, how come I don't look at the camera lens when I'm talking? I mean, I tried my best to do, and I used to do it a lot, but I feel like when I'm talking directly to the camera lens, I have troubles like saying my words. It's like making eye contact with someone, you know? I guess we are making eye contact. I feel like it's just more natural to speak natural. Like I'll take speaking natural over sounding forced anyways. But I'll try my best to look at you. I got my ticket for the long- I really hope one day in my life I won't be in a scenario where I'll have to be faxing and scanning things. I think I have to download the app also. Okay, at this rate, I could film like another two videos. What the? Hopefully, most of you guys already have a printer, so you don't have to go through all that. These are the transfer papers I'm using. These will also be linked below. PPD Photo Paper Direct. I chose this brand over Avery, which was another one other people recommended because PPD, I feel like either they're new or they're just doing a really good job, but they've been making a lot of YouTube videos and video tutorials, which I think are very useful, but I don't know. It could be complete trash. I'll let you guys know. There are two types of transfer papers, dark transfer paper 
light transfer paper. You get the idea. One is meant to be printed on dark clothing and then the other is meant to be printed on white. The main difference being that on light transfer paper, all the whites in your photos will be see-through. So the shine on the baby's head, a lot of the white is just coming from the white t-shirt. Whereas on the black transfer paper, it's not see-through. So you could be like, hey, wait, shouldn't we just go for the uh, dark transfer paper anyways? Yeah, if, you, if you're only gonna buy one type, I think it makes the most sense to go with dark transfer paper. But I wanna make designs today with transparency. So we'll be using the light transfer paper for maybe a lot of it. And the last thing you're gonna need are your blank pieces or whatever you're gonna be printing on. I always do recommend you use something that you already own, something old, just in case you mess up on with these DIY projects, it's cool. But I don't have anything else. Got a pair of Levi 511 Slim Fits. There you go. No smart app required for these. <sighs> Wait, it actually smells so good. I went with a nice light wash so the designs could like pop out a little bit more on these pair. This is actually the lightest wash that isn't white. I'll show you guys my process of setting up the print. Um, but before we do that, use an A4 piece of paper or just one of the transfer papers to get an idea of how big everything's gonna be when we template it on, on the computer. Oh, you also don't need a computer to do this, especially if you have one of these printers where you can like print from your phone. You can use any photo editing app, any way to get a design onto the transfer paper, that's it. Of course, common sense, like don't go on Google Images, start taking photos and then printing them on your pieces of clothing to resell them. I think it's totally cool to do it for personal use. That's what I'm gonna do, but like, you know. So I'm on Google. For these first pair of pants, I'm going to be thematically making it a no game, no life themed. So we're gonna go no game, no life line art. All right, so it's been a bit and I've just drafted up all the designs on a pair of pants just so that I get the sizing and the, I don't know, vision a little bit, right? It could end up not like this at all, but we'll see. Originally, I did say I was gonna do a no game, no life theme, but I've decided I'm just gonna go with like everything. Basically, this is from my girlfriend and this is sort of just like everything, I guess, that could describe her, what she's into aesthetically. And then Umeki is her online name, just like how I go by Koki, she goes by Umeki. And I think that's it for now. The nice thing about DIYing like this type of stuff is that you can just add eventually as you go, right? So if I ever wanted to do, for example, the back of the pair of pants, which I probably will do, because the back is pretty important. You want to flex when like people are walking behind you. So let me explain too, between the light and dark transfer papers. For these designs, the transparent ones, light transfer paper. This hardogram, light transfer paper. This espion, dark transfer paper so that we can actually see the whites. Same here with the eyes. The colors with the dark transfer paper will help the espion pop out more. If I'm going to be using light transfer paper for this hardogram, might have to make that pink a little bit darker also. Again, you can see over here on the ground, I put the A4 piece of cardboard for reference. I'll be using an A4 template on Photoshop and putting the designs on there so I get the sizing right. If you want my exact dimensions that I'm using for Photoshop, it's right here, 2480 by 3508 pixels, uh, 300 DPI. So as you guys can see, I did try my best to get all the images sized up on an A4 piece of paper to print out. Hopefully I did get the sizing right because if I mess up, I only have 10 pieces of paper for each type of transfer paper here. One thing to note though is that resolution on your photo probably matters a lot. Like you don't want it to be low res and you're printing and it's all pixelated. That said though, the images I am using are a little bit pixelated, like a little bit blurry. So we'll see how it turns out. If it turns out complete terrible, then you know we'll fix it for the next one. If it turns out okay, then you know I'm cool with it. Like you see pants far away anyway, so I'm just saying hopefully it's not complete trash, but we'll see. Yo guys, quick interlude, intermission, I mean. Nick messed up and forgot to flip the images before he printed them. So for example, like this, if I place it on the pants, it's gonna come out as ikememu, okay? So you want it to go flip. So here's all the photos printed out. Looks pretty good. I did put it on the pants to see if the size is good and everything looks perfect. Next step is just ironing it on the pants and we're gonna go do that. As you can also see, these ones are on the dark transfer paper and then these ones where I want the transparency to go through, 
on the light transfer paper. Wait, 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 wait. Before you do that, you're gonna wanna cut out your designs. Especially for these ones, if I don't cut it out, it's just gonna be white around it. As for the transparent ones, even though it is like transparent, you're still gonna be able to see a little bit of the film from the piece of paper if you don't cut it out. So we're still gonna be cutting out all the designs. I haven't even done this before, but my advice if you're ever gonna do this is don't cut all the way in. Like, you see how I left a lot of just white space? Because I don't want so many sharp edges. Now, if you have a lot of sharp edges, or just any sharp edge in general, here, I messed up right here where I did this and I went way too deep into the uh, the cutting. I might have problems getting this to stick down on the pants once I iron it on. So I did recognize that mistake. For this one, I didn't do that, except maybe this part. But this part I kept um, all white. You can look at this one. And then these ones are pretty simple. With all the designs cut out, we're ready. I'm gonna get the iron. Nick is about to goof it. Shake my head. Nick, why are you doing this on the floor? First of all, I googled if it's okay to flat iron on this floor. I mean, from my 30 seconds of googling, it seems like it's okay. If it's not, well, you guys will know too. Oh wow, right there, mirror the image. I'm so dumb. Work on a hard heat resistant surface. Do not use an ironing board, which is what I originally was going to use. By the way, follow the instructions that I give you and these that this gives you as close as you can. By the way, follow the instructions that I give you and these that this gives you as close as you can. A lot of people do have problems with getting the design on it. I've never even done this before. So I hope I can get it perfect first try. Cover the work surface with another t-shirt or flat pillowcase. I guess we can do that. Do not do what Nick is about to do with the dark transfer paper. So now you really just want to iron it at max temperature. At least 1200 watts your iron needs to be. And also as hard as you can for three minutes, depending on the size. So I'm just going to go for as long as I can here. And uh, yeah, wish me luck. Is that doing anything? Wait, what? Hold up. I honestly, guys, I feel like it's not working. Wait, why is it not working? Third interruption. Do not listen to any of those nicks. Listen to me, okay? Listen to me and the only nick. You only want to flip your image if you're using the white transfer papers, the light ones, the ones that you want to go transparent. For this one, like this Espeon, you don't want to flip it. Okay. I know what I did wrong now. So for these blue sided ones, these dark transparent pieces of papers, I'm supposed to print it on this way. As well, I'm supposed to peel off this other layer. Careful not to like rip up the ears or something. Very gentle. Make sure it's as flat as possible so you don't like crease it while you're ironing it. That's what I'm worried about, especially this tail since it's so small. And then with the provided silicone paper, you put it on top of it. I'm gonna flat iron this one. I'm gonna put as much pressure as I can. Make sure I hit like every single area. I'll go back to the edges once I feel like the design is stuck onto the pants for it so it doesn't move around. Should note that I also have the mist completely turned off so there's no like water coming out of it. Okay. So it is on there. Nowhere that's loose I feel like. Cool. So I'm just going to do it for maybe one more minute just in case and then I will go flip the other images. This time around, we did not fumble it. For this one, we don't need the silicon sheet. We're just gonna go directly on it right here for about three minutes again. I also guarantee if you have any problems with the design not sticking on, it's probably because your iron isn't hot enough. And this iron is barely at the minimum requirements, which are like 1200 watts. I think they recommend at least 1400, but I'm trying my best, making sure it's hot. I'll just go for like longer than three minutes also. Um, I would be so surprised if this turned out okay. I'm just going to see if it works. So I'm gonna just stretch it a little bit. So this turned out okay. This eye though did not. Okay, let's see. After it cooled down a bit. Hey, not bad. Very loose up here. Okay, I think I might be able to save it. What you are supposed to do anyways, grab the silicon paper and go over for a couple seconds. Still a little bit loose up here. You can see that. 
I'm gonna try with everything I can. I'm gonna put this back over it. I'm gonna go reheat this. I'll do whatever I can to tell you guys if I can fix up. Okay, you guys saw what happened. First of all, this happened because I'm pretty sure it would have fixed it, but I removed it too fast. I completely forgot to let it cool down. So I peeled it while it was warm. I should mention it anyways. Maybe I'll edit the video somehow. But these photo transfer papers, like the whole method in general is pretty jank. That's why it's like not recommended. You know, vinyl is much more recommended. But the ease of this is amazing. The results are pretty decent too. But I'm gonna say... So far, I actually love it. The reason I like this and I think it's okay is because it gives it a little bit of a vintage distressed look. I think if you go into this photo transfer stuff with that mindset that like it's gonna be hard, you're gonna have mess ups. Some of them will be perfect. If you work really hard, be very careful. You could probably get it all perfect too. But for this one, I think it's completely fine. It's cool. It's like a pretty cool vintage wear. With that said, that does not excuse me from messing up. I am gonna try to get the next one better. If I can perfect this one and this one, then this one is just a one-off. But I'm gonna be honest, I don't even expect to. We'll see. Okay guys, I went to go eat the fattest meal ever. I waited long enough with that full meal so that now these are all super cold to the touch. I even opened up the window. I hope that is the solution to these problems, um, but we'll see. Wait, I really messed that one up. It's too rotated. How did I do that? How did I end up doing that? That's fine. The only person who knew it was supposed to be rotated was me, right? Let's see if the silicone paper helps with these loose edges. Okay, so using the silicone paper, I was able to put down all the edges that were sticking up. But this Espeon and this Karomi, the dark transfer paper where we did it directly, was the easiest ones. If you're too scared of any of these things happening or you feel like your iron's not hot enough, etc., just go for the dark transfer papers because I've been able to do it perfectly each time super fast these were the hardest ones from vision to reality i think we did pretty good a few bad decisions later things are only flawed if you think they're flawed if you want something to be intentional just say it's intentional in this case here literally a few seconds ago you know marshall was looking fine and then we got this. How did I get to this point? Okay, so the, his ear was a little bit coming off. I tried to do something about it. I don't know how I ended up just peeling it off thinking I could peel the whole thing and do it again with the other Marshall. Before I show you guys the other Marshall, so I'm like, okay, what if I um cut the ear off the other Marshall and put it on this Marshall? I knew that this was gonna be like, I had an idea it was gonna be so jank and not work. And it kind of worked-ish, maybe. Yo, just think optimistically so what i did was i put it on it looked so weird in this overlap i peeled off the overlap thinking it could look a little bit distressed and it kind of does and i guess it does yeah it just does so yeah that's how we got to that point but i am happy with it and i'll let you guys know too i tried peeling off the whole design the integrity of everything is pretty good these are going to be the next pair of pants so growing up i love power rangers and I love Power Rangers Ninja Storm probably the most. That's the most nostalgic and thematically probably one of the best at the time. Can't argue with me. Actually, dude, wait, guys. What was your favorite Power Rangers? Uh, I think Mystic Force one of the worst. So I got some action figures here. I might make them smaller than they appear here. And I'm going to put a logo. This is going to be a little bit challenging. Yo, guys. Okay, we're back. That took me honestly about an hour. Um, I think the hardest part because I use scissors for most of it. And then uh, I pulled out... The fat little razor for some of it this is the dark transfer paper i had the least amount of troubles with it when i did these oh when i did these pants so i expect this to go quite smooth let's do a tiktok transition so there it is this is actually like really nostalgic if i could change anything probably this crotch area logo thing i use a full-size piece of paper for each side because it did turn out a little bit smaller than i thought but next time i do something like that crotch design i'll make sure it's bigger other than that i like it a lot i still have a lot of more room i can add other things in the future i think tomorrow i'll probably add sensei also from this show probably add him in the back i love it and while i was making these pair of pants i did realize it's sort of like a nostalgic series including these ones because it's Laura umeki this is nostalgic pretty nostalgic right here i mean nostalgia doesn't have to be like 10 plus years ago anyways this for sure though is nostalgic <clears throat> my hair today is so frizzy or something i'm also really oily what 
oil blotting sheets, bro. Wait, if I showed you guys my oil blotting sheets, it's nasty. I usually use about two sheets per spot. It's crazy. Oily skin combination gang. Now's a good time to say that if any of you guys are gonna be doing this, trying it out, or you've done this before, or you have advice for other people, let them know in the comments. But also, if you're gonna be doing this, check out the Discord, link is below. I actually found the best way to plug it, okay? My channel started off from r slash streetwear, if any of you guys are familiar with that, on Reddit. That's the birth of Koki when I was called Nick. I used to love that subreddit until I don't know what happened. Like I think the whole streetwear stuff really, really became mainstream with at least people our age. And the community just became all about criticizing each other's outfits, nitpicking it, saying what's right and what's wrong. The reason I even started going on that subreddit was because it was different from normal fashion we usually see. People used to be so open-minded there, there's literally just no wrong. But slowly and slowly and slowly that subreddit turn into dog <laughs> this never even was the intention but on our discord on the fashion text channel i'll show you guys right here there's like just a bunch of people posting outfits hairstyles whatever anything lifestyle fashion related as for advice poster photos etc etc there's a lot you can do on there and people are super nice like if they're not nice honestly i would say like we handle it but nobody's ever not nice if you come on there though and you're not nice congrats dude you're the first that's pretty cool congrats Man, dude, even then, I bet nobody would do that unless nobody would do that, right? Check out the Discord for sure. Um, quick takeaway from the entire tutorial and everything I talked about today. One, I think the photo transfer stuff actually turned out better than I thought because I thought the reason not a lot of people did um, photo transferring for clothing was because it was just bad. And yeah, there, there are a lot of faults in it. Obviously, don't go start your clothing brand with photo transfer paper. That'd be pretty whack. But for one-off items, for the ease of it, it's really fun. Like, I'm just able to do this in two hours i never even thought about this but i'm gonna start using the photo transfer paper in preparation for realangelhouse.com to envision some things also physically before i even go and make samples all future collections honestly you guys saw right it's one thing to draft it up and then to see it in person it's completely different number two i think hmm let me think first i made a second point without a second point I'm pretty sure I have one though, wait. I can't, you know like I can't think when I'm trying to think because I feel pressured. Not pressure, I don't know what it is. It's like I'm thinking about trying to think so I can't think. Yeah, obviously you guys saw me mess up. I'm like a little bit down about it. I was a little bit down about it. After showing it to Laura and stuff, she still loves it. I actually, now looking at it again, I'm like, wow. You know, today I started without these pants and then now I have two like pretty nice looking pants and i learned obviously a lot from my mistakes i hope you guys take a lot from it i've seen a lot of youtubers do this and they kind of just minimize their mistakes also there's one youtuber who did this made mistakes but didn't even show it so i don't know what mistakes she made and lastly go and use a higher wattage iron than i did on youtube they recommended 1400 watts on the piece of paper they recommend 1600 watts so i use 1200 they recommend 1600 Make sure you just go for the hottest possible because then you'll have the best results for sure. Yo guys, if you're still here, comment Nick needs a sponsor. The reason I do want one is because I need some help to buy these things I need for these DIY tutorials and these attempts. I have a lot of fun doing them. I want to do so many more, but I'm taking it super slow because there's literally only so much I can do. When I was younger, I used to never take sponsors because I thought it'd be like this disingenuous. Is that a word? But growing up, I realized Nick you're kind of dumb. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't like it, subscribe if you liked the video. We're almost at 100,000 subs. Um, more importantly though, we're, we're gonna be closer to a million. Do whatever you wanna do, stay healthy, but also, also, also. Nah, I got nothing. Okay. Oh, I haven't plugged Twitch in a long time. I stream on Twitch. And I don't usually just play games on there. I don't even play games at all. I actually just talk to chat. I talk to you guys. I love it more than YouTube lives, Instagram lives, the TikTok live that I've done once. Oh wait, you're interested about my TikTok? Well, come to Twitch, we can talk about it. You wanna ask? Twitch is the reason I even started making YouTube videos again this year. So shout out Twitch. What's up chat? That's it from me. Have a nice day.